Greetings ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the video. In this video, we are going to be discussing the question of who is a Kafir as according to the Quran. The term Kafir is one that has unfortunately been misappropriated in many discourses. To some, the term Kafir refers to a non-Muslim, a disbeliever, an unbeliever, an infidel, or an unfaithful person. These are some of the most known renditions of the term, so in this video, we will be going through some of the descriptions that the Quran provides for this term. Rather than looking for a definition, I believe that it is more appropriate to look for a description, as this word can embody multiple meanings, some positive and some negative. So, what is the meaning of the word kafir itself? The word kafir comes from the roots, kaf, fa, ra, which make up the verb, kafira, which means to cover, to cover up, or to bury something and cover it with dust, hence why a gardener or a farmer is also referred to as a kafir. So, the word kafir refers to someone who does the act of covering up or suppressing something from being what it is. As for what is being covered, that is not inferred in the literal rendition of the word. The word in its true essence does not bear positive or negative connotations, rather, it is the covered up content that will determine whether the term is negative or positive. So, when someone does the act of covering up in an evil thing or person, they are a kafir in this case, however, Quranically, this would be a commendable position. For example, in chapter 2, verse 256, we are told that, whosoever does the act of kafirah in the rebellious and oppressive regimes, and puts his faith in God, then he has taken hold of a firm handhold which has no breakage. Thus, in this example, the individual is both a kafir and a faithful person. They are kafir because they have denied and rejected the rebellious and oppressive ruling regimes, and they are faithful because they have put their faith in God. Thus, the word kafir in this passage would not be meant in a derogatory sense, rather with a commendable connotation. That being said, let us dig a little deeper into understanding the Quran's intent of the word. When God sends a messenger into society, the objective of that messenger is typically to fight for the rights of the oppressed. This is the core objective of every messenger that has ever been sent, and in order for them to be able to step into these roles, they typically must come from reputable families, meaning that they typically hail from families which are known within the community and respected. This is whether we are speaking about Abraham, Noah, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, David, Solomon, and so many others. The greater number of them came from reputable families, and the wisdom behind this is because these are the sorts of people who will be able to communicate with the governing powers within a given environment, and thereby bring about change in the community. It will bring no benefit to send a messenger of change who comes from a poor household to speak to those of the ruling elite. Rather, a messenger is typically selected from the ruling elite, as there is more probability that the ruling power might change their ways. The messages of the messengers typically encourage the ruling powers to treat the oppressed with dignity, honor and fairness. When messengers are willing to lay down their lives for the sake of their messages, they do not lay down their lives because the people are rejecting them as having been sent by God, the messengers could care less whether the people to whom God had sent them, accept them as having been sent by God, rather, the messengers give up their lives because of the values that they espouse. It is the values that they bring with them, which they are willing to die for, values which are meant to remove the societal oppression and the discrimination of the downtrodden and the minorities within a society. This can also be observed in the Quran in the following passage. We surely know that what they say does indeed grieve thee, O Muhammad. But it is not really thee that they are rejecting, rather it is the signs of God that the wrongdoers are disregarding. So, as this passage suggests, the wrongdoers do not reject the messenger himself, rather it is the message that the messenger has brought which they disregard. And because the message of the messengers typically goes against the social construct of the ruling elite, they typically rebel against the messenger, as what the messenger calls them to, typically may mean that the ruling elite would lose their positions of power and wealth. Opponents who espouse these views are the ones whom the Quran titles as Kafirun, because they know that it is wrong of them to oppress others, yet they continue to do it regardless, in a way, 
they are suppressing the actual reality of what it is that they are doing. They are presenting their wrongdoing as something justifiable, and they cover up and suppress its true reality to gain influence, power and prestige over the people, and as such they become what the Quran refers to as, Kafirun. In this understanding, the word, Kafir, is meant in a derogatory and negative tone. This sort of person may even believe in God, the Last Day, the Scriptures, the Prophets, and the Angels, but yet they do the act of Kafirah. Simply by believing in these aspects of the Deen, does not make one a faithful person, rather, it is by action. One may believe in the existence of God, the inevitability of the Day of Judgment, the fact that God communicates with humans through messengers and prophets and angels, and still have no faith whatsoever, as merely believing in the existence or reality of something is essentially of no significance. So, a Kafir is one who covers up the reality of something, particularly when it deals with the social behavioral aspects within a given society. When the term, those who have done the act of kafirah in God and the last day, is used in the Quran, it is based on action, rather than what is in people's minds. When someone claims to believe in God, but yet they do not treat the poor with kindness, and they shun the orphan and oppress the people, then they do not have faith in God. They believe in God, yes, as in they believe God exists and He is watching them, however, they do not have faith, hence they are, kafirun. Similarly, when the Quran uses the phrase, those who do the act of kafirah in the signs or verses of God, this phraseology is meant in terms of the values which God has sent His messengers with. So when God sends a messenger in a given society, where there is no justice, fairness or equality, and wherein people are being oppressed, then that society by definition has done the act of kafirah in his signs. So to sum up what we have presented so far, a kafir, according to the Quranic usage of the term, refers to an individual who covers up or suppresses something from being what it is, particularly a right which belongs to another, such as the right to life. When someone violates and suppresses that right by taking the life of that person unjustly, then they have done the act of kafirah or suppression in God and his signs, and this extends to all the values of God which the human being may violate.